This staff is the result of my ongoing quest to defy the laws of cartoon physics and make the world of Avatar The Last Airbender my world. I've made numerous suits of armor and other props, learned the art of dual broadsword spinning, and even taught myself to firebend. But this was my greatest challenge so far. I mean, how does he do that? What? It's just a cartoon, you say? Unacceptable. Because I wanted one. Now, I know I'm not the first person to try and recreate Aang's staff, and I was inspired a lot by earlier iterations. Some of them got the glider proportions perfect, but unfortunately weren't able to transform. Others nailed the transformation, but the mechanisms inside them made them a little too heavy and chunky to be practical as a walking stick. Those transforming ones also struggled a little bit with wing fabric leaking out the sides. My mission was to shoot for the best of all worlds. I wanted a staff that would fit in the palm of my hand while neatly concealing a six-foot wingspan. I wanted to construct it all out of materials that would be available in the Avatar universe. And I didn't just want it to work, I wanted it to be a work of art. Is that too much to ask? Go to your room! The biggest challenge was definitely the wing mechanism. And the most obvious solution to that was to build the wings like an Asian paper fan. I mean, look at these creases. It seems like a folding fan is what the animators had in mind. So, with that in mind, I went ahead and purchased two giant six-foot Asian fans. Spoiler alert, neither of them worked. The first had just a few large folds like Aang's glider does, but although from one perspective it was thin enough to fit in a staff, the ends of the paper were too wide in the other direction. The second fan had many small folds, which presented the opposite problem. It was thin side to side, but too large from top to bottom. For a while, this felt like a hard stop on the project. Hoping to find some third option that I could build myself, I started studying fan making. And while watching a YouTube video on the subject, I happened upon this demonstration. What? <gasps> this fan didn't fold, it rolled. My mind was blown. The one big advantage I have over cartoon physics is access to the third dimension, and I hadn't been using it. When I changed my mentality this way, I instantly realized that the shaft of the staff didn't need a rectangular cross-section. If I made it circular instead, I could get the same amount of wing storage into a smaller shape that fit comfortably in my hand. I also realized that the ideal way to transform between glider and staff forms was to roll up the fan from the middle. So I invented a mechanism with fabric wings glued to a metal rod running through the center of the staff. This was connected to a decorative wooden ball, which allowed me to rotate the rod and neatly store the wings. Sure, it doesn't just pop in and out of place like Aang's staff does, but it works. And besides, I'm just a firebender. I've got to assume that Aang gives his glider a little bit of an airbending assist. One problem was down, but several more remained. First, my clever rolling wing idea involved drilling a giant weak point into the middle of the staff. On top of that, the wings could open and close, but they couldn't stay open or closed. Both problems required me to add extra bells and whistles not seen in the cartoon, but I at least tried to make it look decorative. I reinforced the holes with some segments of copper pipe cut in an ornamental shape and polished to a bright gold. Another copper ring above that served to lock the wing slats in place in the staff form. For the glider form, I added a beaded wire lock that wraps around the open slats and keeps the wings in place. When the wings are closed, those beads dangle freely, evoking a little of the feel of a Buddhist monk's shakujo. This felt appropriate because there are some definite Buddhist influences in the design of the Air Nomads, but they're still very much their own thing, which is important because the final step of this project was to cover the staff in designs and artwork representing the culture it came from. The Avatar series gives us precious little exposure to the decimated Air Nomad culture, which left me with a lot of creative latitude. Air, as an element, cannot be seen. You can only see things moving in it. What's more, Air is the element of freedom, 
the air nomads detached themselves from worldly concerns and found peace and freedom. Also, they apparently had pretty good senses of humor. If freedom is a defining tenet of the air nomad society, then I have to imagine in their art they would probably shy away from concrete representations and lean instead toward abstract expression. So, I broke down the idea of aerial motion into two shapes, a curve and an elongated spiral. I arranged these two shapes into patterns suggesting movement, as if a handful of straw had been thrown into the wind. I decided to put these designs on the staff using methods the air nomads would have access to, and that meant learning some new skills, like gold leafing and silk painting. This did make my staff significantly more ornate than Aang's, but in my head canon, Aang was a 12-year-old runaway and just had a training glider. Like a Jedi lightsaber, I imagine adult airbenders lovingly handcrafting each staff to match their personalities. With the front and back of the glider decorated, the last step of the project was to give the sides some extra love by carving a groove down each side and inlaying it with Mother of Pearl. This was more than just decoration, though. The groove made the staff lighter both visually and literally, and created crucial space for the wing locks. Marrying form and function like this was what this project was all about. So many things had dual purposes. There are pieces of wood that hide the hinges while also keeping the wings at the proper angle. There are steel rods that reinforce the wooden wings while also serving as hinges. I had so much fun puzzling out every little detail of this thing. And if you want to know more of those details, I have a four-part tutorial series which goes into a lot more depth. I know it isn't perfect, but even years later, this remains one of my favorite works of art and proudest inventions. So I hope you don't mind if I indulge in a few close-up shots. With this, fantasy and reality are one step closer together. I hope you'll subscribe and join me as I continue to make dreams come true. Thanks for watching.